When the going gets tough, the tough get going. And in these troubled times, we'd like to remember all those innocent lives that were taken from us on the 21st of April 2019. And our hearts go out to their families and friends. However, all of us together as one Sri Lanka, we will rise above the hatred and we will come back even stronger. And today I am in the presence of a sports person that is today considered a legend. He's very modest about it, but he is indeed a legend. He, has, he himself has overcome many hardships. And today I am in the presence of Mr. Suman Avaratnam. Thank you for having me, sir. Thank you for inviting me. Sir, the first question I would like to ask, and a question that many people would like to know when they refer to you, is about your journey as a sports person, how you made it this far to be addressed as a legend today. Right. First of all, I will tell you that when I was a schoolboy, I had no help from my family. Okay. Funny enough, my father never saw me playing a rugby match. He was not worried about my athletics. He was more worried about my studies. But however, I did well at studies, not too good, but not bad enough, but got to. But my main theme was sportsman, to be a sportsman. So I started with athletics. Athletics, as you all know, is the base for all sport. Okay. Yes. You have to be a track or a field athlete to do well in other ways. For any game, you need speed. For cricket, for tennis, for whatever game you are participating, you need speed. So I feel, I feel that all boys from the young age of five should continue, start with athletics as their base. That right. is my contention. And from there on, they should then continue, because now I have an academy. It's called the Sumanaratna Maral Junior Rugby Academy. Yes. Where we take in the boys at grade one and two, that is from the age of five up to eight. And then they are taught the basics of physical sport. From there, they are taught with tennis ball, football, basketball, and athletics. Right. And it's only in the second term that the rugby ball is introduced. So they don't see a rugby ball till they are they have mastered and they have coordinated the eye and hand to catch a small ball or a kick with both feet a football, and also to bounce a basketball. That's the basic thing for rugby. Anything else that you want to know? Yes. So, sir, so you know that due to the prevailing, prevailing situation in the country, uh, the rugby league has been postponed to the month of September. However, the Brad B is being played next month. Yes. So, sir, is there anything that you would like to say, especially regarding this topic? This topic? Yes. Like, right. My, uh, right. I'm, I, I'm not a politician, but I always go on the basis in Sri Lanka, we are Sri Lankan first. When we are born, we are born without a language, we are born without a religion. Correct. So what they like to bring in language and religion to ruin this, that's done by politicians and the, the, the religious clerics who want numbers to, to magnify their own image. Magnify and that's my image. opinion that you are, when you are born, you are born without a language or religion. You can be shifted from bed to bed or court to court, you won't know who you are. But they must be, realize that this language and religion is the one that ruins the country. Right. That's my opinion. Okay, I'm sir. not an atheist. You know what I mean? I'm, I I have a religion. But that doesn't mean to say that I follow that religion to the tilt, you see? Correct. I yes. vary it here and there. Okay. Okay. Another thing that a lot of us want to know, sir, is what do you see the differences in the Bradby that you played in, rugby in your school time, and rugby today? Like, what are the differences in terms of gameplay? coaching and even practice. Right. Brad B. became principal when I was in the third form in 1939. Okay. And he was there till the end of my school career in 1944. I played rugby, rugby for all for the years 41, 42 and 43. That was the pre-Brad B. era. The pre-Brad B. era. Okay. Right. That I never played in the Brad B. Because the pre Bradby era, Bradby, when we won on 43, because of the lack of schools, only Royal and Trinity play rugby. In 41, there were three, four schools playing rugby St. Peter's, Ryra, Trinity, and Royal. 
So we played each other. Then we had three matches. In '42, because of the World War and the bombing was, uh, by the Japanese, there were only two schools that were playing rugby. There was a Trinity and Roy. And we had only one match on '42. In '43, the two principals decided to have two matches: one in Colombo, one in Candy for Roy and Trinity. Zaire had given up. St. Peter's had given up. So that is so the two schools that continued the rugby, and we had this pre-rugby two-match series starting in 43. 44 was a two-match series, and Bradby was given the shield in 44. But in 44, because of the number of jobs available, quite a few, I mean not quite a few, 90% of the Rawleys left school right. who were playing rugby. And Bradby was left with about two, three boys to play in 44. So he decided to keep the Bradby for another year. So in uh -huh. 45, just before he left, he awarded the Bradby Shield. Okay. Right. That, is the, that is the start of the Bradby Shield. Right. And then, when they are on, our training, we came to Coach Roy. And for many years, the Bradby and all the games were were coached by non-professional rugby players, all the old Rawlies or other schools. We had Percy Perra, Archibald Perra, and quite uh, uh, Archibald, yeah, Archibald Perra, yeah, who helped us in the school. But mainly it was all volunteers that took part. But then came the professionals. It is a change. When the, when the amateurs were coaching rugby, it was for the game, for the love of the game and nothing else. Right. I mean, never mind, we enjoy winning, we enjoy losing. Not that we enjoyed losing, but, but we were not disappointed. But we enjoyed the game. But then on, after the professionals came over, win at all costs became the rule of the game. And okay. I hate the damn thing now, because they are, they are trophy hunting and not going for the game. Not for, I always say, forget the trophy, just go and enjoy the game, play well, and the trophy will look after each other. That is my... Play for the love of the game. Play yeah. for the love of the game. That yeah. is my philosophy. Is there any advice that you would like to give for the few generations, like the, all the budding young brother rights? What would you like to see in the future? My idea is that the boys must start young and get used to playing games with their academic, with their, uh, with their academic career. Okay. Don't right. just do academic. And I would tell all coaches, all game coaches, let, if you are an athlete, let him go and play rugby, cricket, whatever. If you are a rugby player, let him go and do athletics. Don't shut, don't treat them in one game. Right. Let right. them enjoy, let them enjoy. A variety the, of different games. Let them enjoy uh, school life. School life. I mean, let them play all the games. Play. I played rugby, I was an athlete, I had boxing, I did a bit of tennis for the house, and I played cricket for the house, and I played cricket for all in the third term. In the fourth okay. time, and the first time, I was kicked out. <laughs> right, that was the part here. We played all the games and we enjoyed our life in the I don't think boys enjoy the school. That's why they stay at home now. Right, right. If you enjoy the school, you school, you go to school. Whatever the problem. In the World War One, bombing in Colombo, we were still in school. <laughs> right, you know, that was our other school. So now, since you spoke to me about your school life, yeah. what would you like to see at Royal yeah. that was present in your time yeah. that is no longer there today? What would you like to see in the school? I think the teachers have a lot to do with that, you see. Okay. Because in our time, the teachers were also very sports conscious. They realized that sport, sports was important. Okay. And I think they, and also house. House, house game was very important for the school. That brought in more competitiveness. Right. And help them to get to get the teamwork. But nowadays, I don't think there's any uh, house section there. So we think there's no house event for rather there's no house this year. And the boys are not, not I mean, they, if you can skip school, they'll skip school. Right. I mean, we went to school just with the love of going to school. With the love of going to school. You see, that was ridiculous. So, now answering your question, I would say that go to school and let the parents coaches and the teachers, especially the teachers, encourage the boys to take up the sport as well. That's what parents, teachers are not doing now. I hate to say it, but that's what's happening. Yeah, at that's Royal. True. Especially yeah. at Royal. Okay. Teachers are more worried about their job than uh, this, uh, whatever they are. Bad. 
Mm -hmm. Also, in terms of your school life, sir, could you uh, mention to us a fond memory that you have, whether it be in school or whether it be playing rugby for school? What do you mean, a memory? Yes. Well, I was a most mischievous chap in school. I was pulled up by the principal umpty in time. But I managed to survive and ended up as rugby captain in one match and athlete captain uh, of the school. I was second in command of the prefects and, and I enjoyed my life. And we loved going to school, though there was a war on. We loved going to school. Yes. And that was the And my, my, my one experience I ever had was when I captained the Royal College rugby team in Kandy. First time we won, I mean, we, we played in Kandy. And for the first time, we beat Trinity in Kandy. It was right. 1943. We had beaten Trinity in Colombia in 1941. Lost badly in 1942. Won the first leg in Colombo, 6-0. Six, six the second match, with a penalty against us, we had five minutes to go. I managed to intercept the pass between the, their center and their winger. I scored a try. Mm -hmm. Luckily, it was put over, and we won the match. First time, we beat Trinity oh. in Kandy. And we won the two match series for the first time. Right. No Bradby, no no trophies. And I hate trophies. You played for the love of the game. Played for the love of the game. Of the game. I'm, I'm not a trophy hunter. I'm not a silver hunter. I love the game. I enjoy all games. And I tell the boys, go and play, enjoy. And the winning and the losing is one thing. But you don't go to lose. You go to play well, enjoy the game. The winning and losing will come later. And the trophy will be a bonus, that's all. And sir, listening to you, I understand that you wish that this attitude that you have was there in the sporting arena all around the world, not just in rugby, but in every but single sport. But then they won't get yeah. the money. You see, the point is there's a lot of money involved in this. Right. So that's why, you see, the, the sponsors want money back. Mm -hmm. So you need competition to get that money. I mean, just going and playing a friendly match is not going to bring you money. Correct. So you're not going to help the, uh, the sport, as, I mean, on the long run. That money is needed to maintain the sport. So that is another aspect that. That should be considered. That should be considered also. You see, but that is the same thing. Thank you, sir. And is there anything that you would like to say, any yes. message that you would like to give to the team of Royal College as they take on the field against the Trinitarians? Yes. As I said, I told, as Martin was here the last, before the last match, he asked me to put all the boys. I asked them, there were about 60 boys. I asked them, how many, how many of you were not coached by me? I said, those who were coached by me, sit down, others stand up. You remember that? Three boys stood up, the balance 57 sat down. So they were brought to the academy or the same to my business. So I take pride and joy in that. And I would give the same advice to the boys of this year who are playing. Go on the field, enjoy playing and play well to your, your best ability. Forget about your injury, don't put bandages and go on the field. <laughs> when I used to coach, anybody with bandages out of the team. Right. But nowadays, those are gone. Now we've got doctors, we've got professors. So that, enjoy the game and play well. That's all. Okay. Forget about the trophy, because everything else. That's thank you very much for your time, Mr. Navaratnam. It was an absolute honor interviewing you. <laughs> okay, thank, thank you very you much. much.